Welcome everyone um, here at the Immunology Meets uh, Philosophy Workshop. It is my great pleasure to welcome you here in Prague um, and those who are in here in person and also those joining us online. My name is Martin Zach and um, I'm the organizer of this event. We um, yeah. Uh, we so we find ourselves uh, at the very heart of Prague um, on the premises of the Institute of Philosophy, uh, the Czech Academy of Sciences, uh, where I work as a philosopher, uh, focusing on conceptual questions uh, regarding immunity. The um, title, uh, as the title of this event suggests. Uh, the main idea behind this workshop is uh, to bring together experts in immunology and in philosophy of immunology. Now, to many, um, perhaps even most, this may sound, um, uh, the combination of science and philosophy may seem strange, even perhaps suspicious. And arguably, and as I hope to, um, as I hope it should become clear soon enough, uh, such a view, I would think, is actually a very young conception um, and an artifact of contemporary division of labor and somewhat over specialization rather than an intrinsic tension between the disciplines. In fact, until very recently in history, most scholars were uh, quite interdisciplinary. That means philosophers were as much scientists as scientists were philosophers, and there was no clear or meaningful distinction between the two. Let me make two remarks. So firstly, what is the role of philosophy in immunology? Well, while it is true that nowadays um, many philosophers may deal with questions that are not of immediate uh, concern to science and vice versa, the tradition of entangling philosophical and scientific thinking to improve our understanding of the world is um, still alive and kicking. A case in point is immunology, I think where conceptual thinking has been as important um, as innovations in experimental practice. And such thinking has led to many important advancements in, um, in, in immunology, such as the work leading to the discovery of pattern recognition receptors. And many other uh, so-called dirty letter secrets, to use a, a phrase coined by Charles Genway, remain um, to be illuminated. Now, these conceptual problems can sometimes be thoughtfully approached also by philosophers who have obtained a very good understanding of the field, usually through years of study, uh, through work at science labs and by close collaboration with uh, researchers. And such philosophers are then in a good position to directly contribute to the solution of uh, scientific problems using philosophical tools. Among many others, these tools include conceptual analysis, examination of arguments, drawing distinctions, and reading around different subjects. These tools are not necessarily specific to philosophy, of course, but this is what philosophers are trained in and especially focus on. The philosophical contribution also take many forms. Um, the, um, uh, to, to quote uh, from a paper published in PNAS, these contributions include, and I quote, um, the clarification of scientific concepts, the critical assessment of scientific assumptions of methods or methods, um, the formulation of new concepts and theories, and the fostering of dialogue between different sciences, as well as between uh, science and society. And quote. The second remark concerns the selection of speakers and the topics to be discussed. Let me briefly introduce our speakers, um, starting with those carrying the professional label of being immunologists. So Judith Allen um, is a professor of immunobiology affiliated to the Lydia Becker Institute of Immunology and Inflammation, the Wellcome Center for Cell Matrix Research, uh, School of Biologic Sciences, uh, University of Manchester. She is a leading expert on the interaction between uh, helminth parasites and their hosts, um, specializing on the role of macrophages and their contribution to tissue repair and its evolutionary history. Dominic Philip. Um, is the uh, principal investigator of the laboratory of um, uh, immunobiology at the Institute of Molecular Genetics of the Czech Academy of Sciences, where he focuses, among other things, um, on the 
uh, phenomenon of uh, central and peripheral immunological tolerance and the role of toll like receptors um, in these and other processes. Heine yeah. Thea is a, a professor of experimental medicine uh, at the Department of Internal Medicine at the Radboud University in Megan Medical Center. And he is a world renowned expert and a pioneer in the field of innate immune, immune memory, um, also so called trained immunity. Now, Miguel Suarez um, is a principal investigator on the, of the inflammation lab at the Instituto Gulbenkian uh, de Ciencia, where he studies evolutionary conserved uh, stress and damage responses, especially in the context of malaria. And in so doing, he also investigates the phenomenon of disease tolerance. <coughs> And finally, uh, Michaela Tenserova is a principal investigator of the Laboratory of Molecular Physiology um, of Bonn at the Institute of Physiology of the Czech Academy of Sciences. Uh, in her research, she looks at bone marrow adipose tissues um, and its contribution to bone homeostasis and whole body energy metabolism. Turning now to the philosophers, I want to change things up a little bit by emphasizing a particular aspect of the kind of philosophical work exhibited here. In particular, I want to highlight an interesting fact, namely that, uh, that while philosophers publish and they are expected to publish um, in philosophical journals, some philosophers also aim and succeed in publishing in uh, science journals. So we have Thomas Predo, who is a senior NRS senior researcher and a principal investigator of the conceptual biology and medicine uh, team at the Immunoconcept Lab at the CNRS and University of Bordeaux. He has introduced a novel theory of immunogenicity, worked on the topic of tissue repair, and he has investigated several immunological concepts, uh, including some uh, concerning cancer. <laughs> Bartholomew Sviatsak is, uh, works at the um, Department of History of Science and Scientific Archaeology at the University of Science and Technology of China. His research has focused, for instance, on the role of uh, balance in immunological response, the tissue of immunological tolerance, and on genomic stress responses um, sorry, uh, also in their evolutionary context. Finally, uh, Sophie Weigl uh, from the Institute of Philosophy at the University of Vienna has also published on a range of topics, especially on um, inheritance, as we see here, but more recently also on adaptive immunity um, in phyla besides vertebrates and on the idea that there is a transgenerational, transgenerational adaptive immune system found in those organisms. So over the course of the next two days, we will hear about diverse uh, yet overlapping topics. Um, as I noted before, while it is important to obtain cellular and molecular data, among others, I think it is equally important to consider uh, how these data can be conceptually organized and reorganized um, so as to be fruitful and infor informative in novel ways. My own impression is that uh, this approach is exemplified by the work of uh, our speakers here and that considering a broader, um, a broader range of topic can help in drawing a bigger and more integrated picture of how organisms deal with their environment. So finally, let me just um, say that I'm very thankful to all of you for accepting the invitation to um, come to Prague. And I hope you will not only benefit from uh, attending this interdisciplinary event, but also have fun while doing so. <laughs>